welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the all-new Land Rover Defender. Driving you the 3-liter 6-cylinder petrol engine, the P400, now also with the MF, the mild hybrid technology. Let's see if that saves a little bit of the fuel consumption. So we we'll start just to roll and I'll also talk about comparison to other SUVs, comparison to Range Rover or Land Rover models internally. And what I can say is that this rugged off-road feeling is somehow transported already to the road. The Land Rover Discovery comes closer to it, but indeed, not only the, the layout, but also seating position-wise, the square dimensions and so on, you do get more off-road feeling. Of course, you cannot compare it at all to the previous Defender generation, completely different cars. The only thing that is shared is the name, nothing else basically, yeah, and the off-road capabilities, but it's a totally different ride. You cannot really compare it. So indeed, rather to a Discovery, but the Discovery feels more street-ish, and this one indeed, you know, from the whole layout, how you sit and how you see everything does feel more off-roadish already here in street driving. This car is also mounted with street tires, so we have the good setup actually for the road. When you're in dry off-road situations, it won't make such a difference. Of course, the off-road tires more play a role when you have muddy conditions. We have the air suspension in here, and the good thing is that to normal Nivoli at the moment, I like cars with air suspension that really say, hello, I'm an air suspension, I'm here, and I'm not anything else, you know, so that you feel the air suspension, and that is still the case with this vehicle. You still feel it is an air suspension, and that's really good. So, also when you're going like left and right, you feel the car is shaking up a little bit, but that's in this case, I think, a good thing, because we want to have this off-road character, actually. And this also accounts for a good traveling comfort. You have the upright seating position, the air suspension is set on a soft, comfortable note. So that's really cool. And also difference to some Range Rover models, which are more set out to some sport here, yeah, you know, in relation on-road driving. So still perfectly suitable for on-road. The steering feeling is, let's say, it doesn't give you like a good connection to the road. Um, it's not so much dead zone area, however, so you, the commands are transported, but it also has this off-road notion, so you steer more away, actually. Off-road, that's really important to keep the car also straight and calm and so on. And I think it's okay that they also transport that to the road. And now to our off-road driving mode <laughs> in Medias Res. So we pump the air suspension up. We have the off-road gear reduction here as well. So, and when you put in the off-road gear reduction, by the way, then the suspension automatically goes up because the car suspects, oh, this guy probably wants to do some off-road driving. Um, by the way, off-road gear reduction to the normal one is about three to one. So when we are uh, here in the third gear, it would be the first gear in the normal driving end. So that means we have more power at slow speeds here with the off-road gear reduction. And so then it's also easier when you, for example, have a steep uphill here and so on. By the way, when the air suspension is all the way up, you have actually a little bit less comfort. It looks like you have more dampening, but you... Um, must think about that you also have less dampening in the other direction. So overall, it's less comfortable to drive with the suspension all the way up. Here now, some big rocks on the ground. You see it's shaking a lot. But the cool thing is here with off-road vehicles with air suspension, that it's still somewhat comfortable, although it's a very rough riding. And when you do not have air suspension, this is not always the case. Here I can also put in the camera view. Um, so this is really helpful here in this off-road view. 
because sometimes I cannot really see what's going on and then the camera view is definitely helping me. You can also adjust it like which camera perspective you want to have. Of course, um, for off-road driving, this is uh, at the moment the, the rear perspective, which is not that helpful. The most helpful one is always the front perspective because you do not see what's going on there in the front hood and so on. Now there's a nice water pit. That's of course always even more fun looking at it from the outside. Slowly inside. Weighting depth, of course, 90 centimeters, way enough. You can also see the water then here on the, on the camera. And like driving through the water from the exterior is always more spectacular than from intro, from, because here from driving just, it's like, so what? <laughs> Now we're heading on to a steep downhill. We can play with the hill descent control. You can activate it just with a click of a button, but also when you have the off-road gear reduction set, then it's automatically on. And you change the speed here with the cruise control on the left side of the steering wheel, uh, on the right side of the steering wheel. So I set it now to minus, 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 like a um, low setting. Here I just basically approach it slowly and then I let go of the brake and then the yeah I'm not on the brakes here at all here's in control is ruling everything 75% downhill wow really cool and I could also set the speed a little bit higher than when we for example like you know not such a steep downhill and now for example this is like a hardened sand area um, so it's not that slippery and at the same time a little bit rougher than as for the holes. But here, for, for example, I could theoretically set the hill descent control to a little higher speed and then when just letting it roll, we have a little bit more speed, but it's also not going downhill that much. So you can adjust that. And once again, I have to say, really impressed on how comfortable off-road driving is still with this vehicle and of course even more capability if you compare it then, for example to a discovery. And now to our conclusion for the day with the all new Land Rover Defender. Comparing old and new doesn't really make too much sense because it's a completely different vehicle. You can rather relate to the other models that Land Rover or Range Rover have to offer Closer it comes surely to the Discovery, but definitely a more off-roadish Discovery. You see it and you also feel it while driving, even more off-road capable and also the on-road driving experience feels off-roadish and that's also the reason why you would go for that vehicle. Approximately like you compare G-Class versus GLE at Mercedes. It just has exterior and from driving feeling this off-road carrier and also from the interior materials a little bit more rugged. We found that the material mix on the interior could have been made a little bit easier. They are very, you know, you know, just too many different elements and also too many different materials. So they could have kept it a little bit simpler, I think. Good upgrade there with the infotainment system, which is more intuitive than the systems we have seen before. Very impressive in the off-road capabilities, that's for sure. So hardly anything that this car cannot master in off-road driving. Then about the fuel consumption. With the diesel, we could score about like minimum consumption, seven liters or more kilometers, 34 MPG US, 41 MPG UK. And with the big petrol engine, six cylinder petrol engine, we could score some 10 liters on one kilometers, which would be 23 mpg US and about 28 mpg UK. So about three liters difference then between these two engines here in our first test. However, the diesel will have a little bit more advantage when you really hammer these vehicles and the consumptions go up. So 
weren't the worst results, but there are of course also no fuel consumption wonder with this weight you're carrying around. However, overall a very comfortable vehicle also for longer journeys because this soft off-road character also is transformed into road driving. No real driving dynamics and so on, but that's also not expected. But this soft off-road character also helps you then on longer journeys. You can get a somewhat reasonable one for about 50,000 euros or dollars depending then on the market where the three door or five doors more or less expensive usually the three doors of course less expensive and it also depends on the standard equipment there is some more standard equipment than with other Land Rovers for example I have to bear that in mind however it's not at all a cheap vehicle so I said earlier when you pick the big petrol engine spec it up a little bit you can also score some 80k or something and then it's of course quite expensive so for having this more rugged feel or look to it i think it would have been even cooler when it would be positioned price-wise below the discovery that if you know that would have been like a crush to the market at these prices you have to wonder if you take the comp competition into account which have so more other new modern things and better combine the comfort and the driving dynamics so couldn't really say that it is top of the market but combining this off-road character and also applying to the on-road, that is the unique thing about this vehicle. So that's the conclusion for the day. Hope you enjoyed this special episode. Give me your feedback and see you next time.